Hey guys, so it's that time of the year again. The Beautylish gift card event is upon us. I'm so excited. Uh, it starts today at nine o'clock Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, and uh, you, you get $20 back in a gift card for every $100 you spend. So it's a great time to stock up on some things for yourself. It's obviously a great time to pick up some things for gifts. And uh, it's no secret, but the Sephora VIB sale is uh, coming, I think in the beginning of November. So what I really tried to do for this recommendations video is really hone in on uh, basically what makes Beautylish so amazing, which is they have so many luxury brands. They have so many brands that Sephora doesn't carry. Um, a lot of those brands are my favorites. So I'm really gonna focus on those. I may have a few recommendations here and there that uh, Sephora does carry, but you know, if you don't shop that VIB sale, like as soon as it starts, a lot of things sell out. So it could be a good time to kind of get a head start on some things if you really want to stock up on some things or like I said, get a head start on gift shopping. So anyway, without any further ado, let me go ahead and get started. I am gonna go by brand, that's usually how I do this, and I will have chapters and a full list of everything I talk about down below in my description box. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to navigate to what you are most interested in. So I'm gonna start with um, makeup. So I'm gonna have makeup, I'm gonna have skincare, hair care, um, and then brushes and fragrances and lots of recommendations. So let's start with By Terry. By Terry is, again, one of my favorite brands that Sephora doesn't carry. And I'm gonna start actually with their newest product, which is their latest nine pan eyeshadow palette. So this is the number four Bonjour Paris nine eyeshadow palette. And this is actually what I have on my eyes today. Um, I really, really love this color story. I mean, it is just a neutral lover's dream. I really love the fact that all of the shades in here are um, satin to a metallic. There are no mattes in here. I know a lot of people like mattes. I don't use that many mattes, maybe just for eyeliner. I really like kind of satin metallic shades all over my lid, as you can tell. So I love the color story. I love the finish of these shadows. I will say though that um, I feel like these shadows maybe are pressed a little bit hard. So I feel like when I first used this palette, I was like, hmm, I don't feel like I'm getting that much pigment. But it was almost like I just kind of had to break through or loosen up the product a little bit and then I started to get really amazing payoff. So I really enjoy this palette. So just wanted to mention this to you guys. And then some products that I have talked about incessantly on my channel that I really love from By Terry. Um, the first is their Terribly Denseless Foundation. I feel like I've recommended this in a previous Beautylish gift card event. Uh, video, a lot of these products I have already talked about, but it's worth repeating. Um, this is their anti-wrinkle serum foundation, and I have it in the shade number three vanilla beige. It is just such a lovely foundation. It looks so beautiful on the skin. It has such a beautiful creamy texture, and it has pretty decent coverage. I would say light, medium, medium coverage. So if you've been kind of interested in like testing out a By Terry foundation, this one has been my favorite. I've tried a few, including their, I think it's like a tinted moisturizer, and I liked this one better, this serum foundation. And of course, I talked about this actually in my top three products in every category. This is the By Terry Brightening CC Serum in Sunny Flash, number four, and I, just love it. I love it as a primer. I love it as a bronzer. I love it as a highlight. Like it's just this glorious product that gives you a bronzy glow. It gives you, I mean, quite a bit of a glow. I only, I would say, only use this as a primer slash base in the spring summertime because it does, for my skin tone, it does give me quite a bit of glow, not just in the bronze, but also in like the highlighty, like metallic arena. It's uh, it's really glowy, but it's so beautiful. Like you look completely otherworldly when you put this on. And then I wanted to mention their powders, of course, the By Terry Hyaluronic uh, Loose Setting Powders. I think that's the full name. I really love the two shades, Rosy Light and Natural. Rosy Light is something I like to press underneath my eyes when I put concealer on, and that's actually what I did today. So that's what I have underneath my eyes. And the way I like to apply this powder, and it, it took me a little bit to kind of figure out how I like to use this powder because I have very dry skin, and if I just 
like dunk my brush in there and kind of just brush this powder all over my face. My face ends up looking a little bit dry and when I use my finger and I pick up just a little bit and I actually press it into my concealer, it is flawless. I get a matte but skin-like finish. I don't get any sort of um, sinking into fine lines. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't uh, just start to kind of like suck up the moisture in my skin and it's really beautiful. So that's how I like to use these loose powders. And again, I love rosy light and natural. They did also come out with palettes of their powder in pressed form. So this is uh, the medium to warm. So this is number two and this is number one, which is fair to medium. So I'll use this again with my finger if I want to, just press it underneath my eyes and then I'll use this one to kind of very lightly dust all over my face. And then I can use this shade in the fair medium as a little bit of a bronzer. So if I had to choose my favorite form of this powder, it is definitely loose. I feel like that looks a little bit more flawless on my face, but you cannot beat like the practicality of having four different powders in a palette. This is like perfect for travel, perfect just you know on the go if you need to throw something into your bag. These are so much more convenient than loose powder. But um, those are the By Terry powders. And then I did notice that this limited edition face palette, which I adore, is still available. This is the Brightening CC palette in number two, Beach Bomb. And this came out this past summer. Um, they have one in like a lighter color story that came out last year, limited edition. So I believe that's out of stock already, but this is gorgeous, absolutely stunning. This highlight is beautiful. This um, bronze shade is beautiful. And then look how beautiful these blushes are. Just absolutely gorgeous. Like this one, oh my gosh. And these powders are so soft and they're so creamy. And they give you that like satin sheen. Gorgeous. I was surprised that this was still available. So when I saw that it was, I was like, I gotta mention this because this is beautiful. Oh, and I completely skipped over the concealer that I'm wearing. I am wearing the um, By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Concealer. These are the latest concealers that By Terry has come out with. It has like a little brush. Well, it's not that little actually. It's a wide kind of brush. And I use shade number 200 Natural. It's a little bit more, I think, neutral toned than the 100. I think that one is, maybe it's just light. Anyway, I have both 100 and 200 and I end up using 200 a little bit more again, because it's just a little bit more neutral and I like the tone underneath my eyes. So that's the concealer that I'm wearing today. It's so creamy. I think you can see that on the brush tip there. It's such a creamy texture. And I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, by Terry used to be the YSL beauty creative director, and she's the one that created the Touche Clot concealer. So you can definitely sense that when you're using this concealer. So if you're a big fan of the Touche Clot, maybe you wanna just try something different, I would give this a shot because it's very, very similar. All right, moving on to Surat. So Surat Beauty used to be carried at Sephora, but it looks like they've uh, kind of backed away from it. Um, but lucky for us, Beautylish has most, if not all of, the entire Surat Beauty line. So I am wearing the Dew Drop Foundation, and this is the one that I mentioned in my top three um, products in every category video. I love this foundation. I am wearing three today. So I go between three and four. Four is like a little bit warmer, um, a little bit deeper, a little bit warmer. And three is really, really great for my skin tone, like in the fall, winter. So just as a shade reference, if you're similar to my skin tone, um, but the foundation, oh, it's so beautiful. I've talked about this foundation a lot. Uh, I probably recommend it in every single Beautylish gift card event video that I've done, um, but it's just, Amazing, it's just amazing. And I actually um, saw a friend of mine when I had the foundation on when I was filming that top three video and she was like talking to me and she just leaned in and she was like, your skin looks incredible. What, what do you have on? And I told her about this and she was like, I am running out and getting that right now. She was like, where can I get it? And I was like, I think you need to order it. But anyway, um, this Dew Drop Foundation really makes your skin, it makes your face look like it has a filter, basically. It just softens the appearance of your skin. Just everything all of a sudden just looks really like a blurred out and blown out and it's stunning. It wears really well. It sets down really well. Like it just behaves really nicely. It doesn't like break up around my nose. It just, mm. I wouldn't say it's long wearing, 
but it wears well. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't break down at the end of the day in any weird, funky way. It just kind of slowly starts to fade around my nose, slowly starts to fade basically around my oilier areas. It fades, but just ever so gracefully. It's stunning. I can't recommend this foundation enough. So that is the Surat Dewdrop Foundation. And then, of course, I wanted to mention their Noir Lash Tint. So this was again, in my top three video, and I couldn't find this. <laughs> I couldn't find this, so I flashed a picture up of it, but I did find it eventually. So <laughs> this is the mascara that has uh, like a bristleless wand. It basically has threading at the end. So that's how you apply it. You just kind of glide that stick basically along your lashes and it works like a charm. It's actually a lot less messy. Without those bristles, I don't feel like I ever get the mascara like onto my lid, um, but the mascara itself is, really, really nice. It is uh, very long lasting. Um, you definitely need to use like an oil eye makeup remover at the end of the day to remove it. And it keeps my lashes looking really curled. And I love the way it applies. That sounded like it was gonna land in my backyard. And it just makes my lashes look really beautiful. Like there's something about this applicator, it really just kind of lays the mascara along each eyelash really, beautifully. I don't feel like I have to constantly work it in. I just sort of like glide it along my lashes and it's like, oh, it's really, really fast and easy. So that is the Noir Lash Tint from Surat. And then quickly, I just wanted to mention the Surat blushes and the Surat eyeshadows. So I have a lot. I have a lot of them. Here's my collection. Uh, here, whoa, here's the Surat eyeshadows. I don't have those on today. I should have put them on, but I wanted to put that by Terry um, palette on for you guys. So these blushes are amazing. I have this shade, I think it's called Grisal. I may be mispronouncing it, but that is uh, Surat's contour shade. So I have that pretty much as a contour. And I don't know where I saw this, maybe it was on YouTube or maybe it was just an interview with um, Troy Surat, uh, but he said a bad contour is like a bad toupee. <laughs> and those words just, haunt me. Every time I think about doing a contour, I'm like, oh, you gotta be careful. And then for blush, I have this blush on this shade and I cannot pronounce that name. So there it is. Of course, I'll have it down below in the description box, um, but that's basically what I have lightly dusted on my cheeks. There is something really beautiful about his formula. His formula is like both the eyeshadows and the blushes. It's almost like they're a powder to cream. It's almost like those Tom Ford bronzers that I talk about and the blushes, his new blush duos that I've mentioned. They're an obvious powder. They go on like a powder. They pick up like a powder. They are a powder product. But once they hit your skin, it's like they melt and they just turn into almost like a cream or liquid. And Surratt's products uh, were the first ones where I felt like I saw that effect and it was, oh, it's just incredible. So anyway, definitely recommend the blushes and the eyeshadows. <laughs> and then I did just wanna mention the Surratt Beauty brushes. Um, his brushes are handmade in Japan and they are of natural hair and they are just beautiful, beautiful, impeccably designed brushes. The one I'm gonna call out is the cheek brush. And this has, look at that. It's just this like poofy, round, like perfect blush brush. If you just want a buff, it's great for sweeping. And this is squirrel hair. So it's incredibly, incredibly soft, but because it's natural haired, it does pick up product really nicely as well. So I did just want to mention that. I will talk about more brushes uh, towards the end of this video, but oh, I just had to mention this brush. I love this one. I just love this like perfectly round domed shape. It just reminds me of like a bunny tail. Okay, and I have to talk about Kier Weiss, of course. I love Kier Weiss products. It is an organic beauty brand, and they have my absolute favorite cream blushes. But they've also come out with this uh, palette. It's called the Cheek Collective. And I believe there's two, yeah, there's two different uh, color stories. So this one is the lighter of the two. So this has the blossoming blush in here, and then it has the radiance highlight, and then the Gilded Bronze. So I have this blossoming blush just really lightly tapped over that Surat blush that I can't pronounce. Um, I have it really like lightly tapped just over the apples of my cheeks just to make them pop a little bit more. 
and it's just hard to resist using Kira Weiss uh, cream blushes. And then I have this highlight um, on the tops of my cheeks. So that's what you see here, this really soft, subtle glow. It's just gorgeous. It's like perfect for the mood that I'm in. It's just this really creamy highlight. It's not too stark and bright and uber metallic and you know all those things, which trust me, I definitely get in the mood for. This one is just a really soft, subtle one. Isn't that stunning? And then I put this gilded bronzer shade. I just put that on the back here just to add a little bit more depth, but also just to make my skin a little bit more glowy as well. So of course I was gonna talk about the blushes. I think if any of the shades speak to you, you can't go wrong. The formula is really what is so incredible about these cream blushes. They just stay on, they go on really easily, they look instantly blown out. They're just so easy to use. They're like mind blowing. Um, but when I saw this palette, I was like, oh cool. You can get a blush and then also get some of the other cream products. So I wanted to call this out. And then I wanted to mention their lip tints. So the Kira Weiss lip tints are, they're basically like a tinted balm and they come in her refillable packaging here. And so these like swing open, these doors swing open. And I went with the shade Amazed because when I put this on my lips, it ends up almost like a light balm, tinted balm version of the Pat McGrath Madame Grige lipstick. Now, I just wore that for my Pat McGrath holiday collection and I put it on and I was like, oh, I love this. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> These Lux Trans lipsticks, I think have been discontinued fully. So that color is gone. And I was so sad when I like realized that all over again. Um, and so I've just been kind of, you know, so I've just been kind of poking around my collection and I've been uh, just looking for stuff that I think could be a good substitute for that Madame Grige. And this surprisingly, because it's so much more violet, but because it's a balm and it mixes basically with the color of your lips, it kind of works. So I wanted to mention uh, this lip tint to you and I've had, I don't know, maybe two or three different shades of this lip tint. It's it's great. And I think the first time I purchased one of these lip tints was when I was back in New York City visiting and it was one of those brutal, brutal winter days where it was like kind of like sleeting and it was windy and it was like really, really cold and my lips were just so chapped. And I was like, I need, I need something real. So I went and got the lip tint and it kind of healed my lips. So I've been a big fan ever since. All right, that is Keir Weiss. So many other products I could talk about, but I'm just gonna keep this moving and keep it moving. Wayne Goss. Wayne Goss, as we know, is only carried at Beautylish. So of course I had to talk about Wayne Goss. His latest luxury eyeshadow palette in Tourmaline. I'm in love, guys. This is gorgeous. I can't stop using it. I love pulling it out and just putting this all over my shade as like a one and done. Or anytime I'm like, oh, I just want a little something, like a little bit smokier. I pull this out and I play with all of these deeper shades. I love this palette. I love his formula. The other one that I really love is the first one that he came out with, Imperial Topaz. This is just such a great, like neutral with some, that warm pop over here, but a neutral palette otherwise. I really love this Wayne Goss eyeshadow formula. I feel like they're just easy to use. There's no learning curve. They're not really pigmented. There's no trick to using them. Just really straightforward, really beautiful pigmentation, really beautiful finishes. So love those eyeshadow palettes. And then of course, I had to mention the Wayne Goss mascara. You guys, this mascara is actually the one that I have on today. It's so, it's just so good. It's so, so good. It reminds me of the Surat Noir Lash Tint, um, but it does have some bristles at the end of this wand, but really, really short, really spaced out. And it's sort of the same idea as the Surat. Like I just feel like I'm laying the mascara down over my lashes instead of like trying to brush it on and work it on. I'm just gently laying it onto my uh, lashes. And same effect. I just feel like it keeps my curl. It keeps my curl, I think, a little bit better than the Surat. Um, it is just like the Surat, a little bit difficult to take off. So I definitely use one of those like biphasal eye makeup removers, ones with like an oil base or whatever, and then it comes off like a dream. But it doesn't smudge, it doesn't flake, it, it's not, it doesn't irritate my eyes. Some mascaras irritate my eyes, it doesn't irritate my eyes. And yeah, the fact that it can keep the curl in my lashes, that is like, whoa. 
that is definitely something very, very special. So that's the Wayne Goss Waterproof Mascara. And then the Wayne Goss Essential Eye Coal Pencils. I was just about to put this on, just out of habit, and there's another eyeliner I wanted to talk about, so I have that on my eyes. I don't have this on today, but I love, love, love these Essential Eye Coal Pencils. I love working with coal. I feel like they go on really easily, really smoothly, very, very pigmented. They go onto my waterline. I can tight line with it. Just really easy to use and for me they don't smudge for as easy as these go on you would kind of assume that they would smudge throughout the day but they don't they don't and he now has a gorgeous like array of shades i'm holding the one that i use the most which is precious topaz um, but with the tourmaline palette he came out with like two new shades which are really beautiful and the blue sapphire is really gorgeous i talked about that i think in my top three videos so i just wanted to mention those eyeliners again. And you know, there really isn't much from the Wayne Goss line that I don't love. The blush and highlighter duos, the bronzer duos, God, those are really, really beautiful. All of his lipsticks, the sh all the shades are so gorgeous. I think they're so, so gorgeous. His, his lip glosses are gorgeous. Anyway, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the Wayne Goss products. All of his brushes, oh my gosh, his brushes where he started. <laughs> his brushes are amazing. So anyway, just to keep this video moving, I'm gonna move on from Wayne Goss, but like I said, I don't think you can go wrong with any of his products. All right, next let's talk about Sisley. One of my favorite brands, uh, they have so many good things. So I'm gonna start with their makeup products and I don't wanna sound like a broken record. I've talked about Sisley so often on this channel, um, but I love all of their base products. Uh, except for their tinted moisturizer. Their tinted moisturizer just didn't really work out for me. It didn't wear well on my skin. It looked okay when I first applied it and then I just feel like kind of deteriorated over the day. Uh, but I did a whole dedicated video to that. So anyway, um, that's probably the one and only base product that uh, didn't work for me from Sisley. So a few of their makeup products that I want to call out are their Lafito Rouge lipsticks. These are matte lipsticks that have a really creamy formula or just such a gorgeous formula and their colors are so beautiful. So number 33 is a shade that I end up wearing quite a bit in the fall winter time because it has that beautiful rusty uh, reddish brown to it, which I really love, very autumnal. Um, and then the one shade that I think is a great neutral that I wear all year round is number 11. And it's this formula is just, Fantastic. And then I did want to mention their Lafito Lip Twist. So this is actually what I have on my lips today, and I have shade number one. And I was just checking the Beautylish site, and it seems like most of the colors are sold out. Am I surprised? Not really. But number one seems to be in stock, and this is probably my most used shade from them because it's this cool leaning, nude and there's a little bit of shimmer. So these come in different finishes, just shimmer or just kind of like the tinted balm that these are, or they have mattes. So this is one that has a little bit of shimmer and like I said, it's what I'm wearing and it has just that little bit of coolness to it. I think you can probably see it in the bullet. It just has a little bit of coolness to it and because these are balmy, so comfortable, so, so comfortable. So I wanted to mention these and like I said, I'm pretty sure number one is still in stock and a lot of my other favorites that I was gonna talk about are out of stock, but if they do come in stock, number seven, Coral, that is an excellent one. But moving on from that, they have also come out with new shades in their uh, waterproof eyeliner. It's their Fito Cole Star Waterproof. These came out, I wanna say, at least two or three years ago at this point. They kind of redid their eyeliners. They came out with this uh, Lafito Coal Star eyeliners, and I really loved the ones that weren't sparkling, basically. The sparkling ones, like the, what made them sparkle, I guess it's just this micro glitter in there, they were actually kind of chunky, and you could feel them when you applied it, and it would fall throughout the day, and I just, I didn't like them, but I liked all the shades that weren't sparkling. So they've come out with uh, some new matte shades, and I have three of them here. Uh, this one is Matte Jungle, and this is a really fun green shade, and that is what I have on my upper waterline, so you probably, you probably can't see it that well, but I just think it's a really nice, fun alternative to using black or brown. Like, I love these blues and greens. 
Um, and then I also have matte graphite, which is uh, like a matte gray, but it's this really beautiful, cool, cool gray. Do you see that little bit of blue in there? Really pretty. And then there is matte tonka, and this is a really beautiful like chocolate brown shade. So that is matte tonka. And that is what I have in my lower waterline. And these are wonderful, really, really wonderful. They're long lasting, they go on really beautifully. I really enjoy them. All right, that is it for Sisley makeup. Um, actually, this is a really good segue to move into <laughs> Sisley skincare. This is one where I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but the Sisley Velvet Sleeping Mask. This is my favorite mask, my favorite like lotion-y type mask, not a sheet mask or something. This is so good. This is a good night's rest in a bottle. Love this. I love the very slight scent in here. It uses saffron flowers. It just is so soothing and it's so relaxing. I always travel with this because when I get off of a plane, I look like a zombie and this just brings me to life. So I can't recommend this enough. I've been recommending this for years and probably in every single gift card event video. Anytime I could talk about this velvet sleeping mask, I do. So had to mention this. I, this is probably like my fifth or sixth tube of this. Oh, it's so good. So let's move on to Sisley Hair Care. Now, you guys know that I am a huge fan of their Revitalizing Fortifying Serum. This is their scalp serum, and you just you know drop nine drops along your scalp and you massage it in. I started using this years ago, and I have never looked back. My scalp feels amazing. I felt like it took a while, uh, probably about four months, but I started to see more growth and it's really just incredible. So I've talked about this a lot, so I'm not gonna go on too much about this. Um, but what surprises me is because I loved this so much, I don't really know why I didn't like dive right in <laughs> to the rest of the Sisley hair care. I know they rolled it out a little bit more slowly, um, but I just started using basically like the rest of their hair care system, I wanna say about a month or so ago. And I just feel like my hair looks healthy. It's behaving really well. I don't feel like my ends are dry and my scalp is oily. Like my hair is just very uh, consistent from roots to ends, which is probably a first for me. I feel like my ends always feel like hay and my roots are always like real greasy. So that has been a really nice change and I've been using the, let's see, the Revitalizing Smoothing Shampoo and the Restructuring Conditioner. It smells really good too actually. Now that I'm like moving my hair around, I can smell it. it smells really, really nice. And I, I've just always had this, I guess, paranoia about hair care products where most hair care products are geared towards uh, women's hair that's been dyed. And because I don't dye my hair, my hair isn't that dry or it's not that damaged. So a lot of products that I've tried in the past, they're too heavy. It makes my straight undyed hair just like really flat. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I need. So I always go for like volumizing shampoos. Um, and I still love my Orbe Magnificent um, Volume Shampoo and Conditioner. I do still love that set, by the way. And I'll probably go between these two. So whenever I see things like restructuring conditioner or revitalizing, I'm like, oh, it's just gonna weigh my hair down. But I'm so glad that I tried these because it's almost like when I started using hair masks, I thought it was just gonna make my hair look really flat, like just overly conditioned and just lifeless. But it's done the complete opposite. I feel like it's just made my hair really light and um, fluffy is not the right word, but just light, you know, light and healthy, where I feel like I don't need as much uh, styling products just to get my hair to like, you know, look like it has a little bit of life to it. Um, so I've really been enjoying uh, these two products. And also the amazing thing is you don't need much of either of these. This conditioner is really thick. So I just use one pump of each in the shower. Like the shampoo, you only need one pump. It like a little bit goes a long way. So I have been loving that shampoo and conditioner. And then I decided to try their restructuring nourishing balm. And again, I was like, you know, maybe it's just gonna make my hair too limp and lifeless, uh, but it's really lovely. I just put it on like basically from like the midway down and I just kind of work it in just a little bit. Uh, actually, you can see, you can see I've used this three times. 
It takes a little scoop like that. Um, and I just add it to the ends of my hair. You can use it as an overnight mask, which I don't. For like a quick kind of nourishing situation, you can put it on just for like 30 minutes and then just wash it out in the shower. So that's what I do. I've just been putting it on um, while I'm getting ready to jump in the shower or whatever. And it's really nice. I feel like, again, it's just made my hair um, healthy without making it too limp or like overly conditioned or lifeless. It's just given it, it's actually given it life. Um, so I've been enjoying that as well. And then this product is amazing. So this is the Cream 230 from uh, Sisley. And I used to use the Balm Door from Orbe, and that was like a heat protecting kind of like hair lotion, and that's what this is as well. But this is a little bit more versatile, and I also feel like I don't need as much of the product. I only use about a pump, maybe a pump and a half, of this and with the Orbe product, I was using like three to four pumps. It's like a little bit thinner. This has a little bit of a thicker texture to it. So I just make sure I work it, you know, with my hands, kind of like heat it up a little bit. Um, and then I work it into my hair and it is fantastic. So it's such a good heat protectant and it can be used as like a leave-in conditioner. So there are definitely days where I just don't feel like drying my hair and I just let it air dry and I'll throw this in. And I've tried that with the Orbe Balm Door and that, it will make my hair just too heavy. Like that particular product, that needs to be dried. You have to like dry your hair out. But with this, if I leave this in as a leave-in conditioner, my hair is wet, I don't dry my hair, it's lovely. It just leaves my hair really soft. It doesn't like weigh it down or anything. So I have been loving, loving this product. And then last but not least for the Sisley Hair Care, this I've talked about before, but this is the Precious Hair Care Oil. And uh, again, I keep kind of comparing these products to Orbe products because Orbe is probably the hair care line I'm most familiar with, um, but they have a Gold Lust oil. I don't know if that's the full name, but it's Gold Lust. That one is just, it's a little bit too thick. That one is actually a perfect example for, I think it was like created for hair that has been really damaged, it's been dyed a lot, and that my hair is just not that damaged. It's just kind of dry. That one, it was like, I couldn't use like a little amount enough. Like it was just, no matter how much I pumped out, it was too much. I couldn't like work it in. It would always just end up looking, like it would just make my hair look really, really stringy. This oil is fantastic. In fact, I'm gonna put some on because I didn't put any on. Um, but it has such a beautiful like mid weight texture to it. And when I work it into my hand, and then just work it into my ends. It just makes everything look really shiny, but not oily at all. Like, let me back up so you can see, actually see the ends of my hair. But it just makes everything like nourish. Like it's the perfect like drink for your hair. It just doesn't look like oily or anything. It just looks like shiny and healthy. So I am, like loving these Sisley hair care products. I don't think I've ever talked so much about hair care before. And I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't try them sooner. I should have talked about these in that products I wish I tried sooner video because man, these are fantastic. Okay, continuing on with, with hair care, I do love Orbe. And there are some products that I did wanna point out. I know Orbe is sold at Sephora now, but they don't have the full line. And I don't think I saw these products there. I could be wrong. The Silverati, illuminating pomade. So I've been looking for pomade. I mean, I know my hair looks a little fluffy right now, but without this pomade, it's like even fluffier. I look like a rooster. Um, but this Silverati pomade is like metallic. It's so cool. So I have these gray hairs up at the front and they are definitely coarser than my regular hair. So when I have growth, they just stick right up. I'm sure you guys have seen it. <laughs> it just stick right up. And most days, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna fight it. Like I just, I can't be bothered. But some days I'm like, get down. And so I use this uh, pomade and I need just a little bit. It's very, very thick, it's pomade. So it's very thick, it's a little bit sticky and I just kind of like work it into my bangs and yeah, it just controls them. And I like that it's meant for silver hair because because that's what I've got in the front here. And it just makes them just a little bit more shiny, a little bit more silver. And then speaking of Orbe, um, I mean, the hair care products in that line are incredible, right? They're just, they're out of this world. But what I really, really love, 
And what I missed a little bit not using the shampoo and conditioner was the scent. So I decided to get the Cote d'Azur uh, perfume uh, because I missed the scent so much. And this is probably not the most, I don't know, ideal like fall winter scent because it really is so summery and like bronze skin and, and like dining out on like a terrace somewhere overlooking like the Amalfi Coast. That's essentially what I think of when I um, smell this perfume, but it's a perfect like representation of the fragrance that's used in the Orbe products and I love it. Like if you love the scent of the Orbe products, just do yourself a favor and get this uh, fragrance because it's amazing. So I've worn this a couple of times and it's really lovely. It lasted all day. Um, I did spray it when I had like long sleeves on and I could smell it on my clothing the next day. So it does have some longevity for sure. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And then the other perfume I wanted to mention is from Tom Ford. I'm really late to the game because I'm just kind of newly discovering these uh, deeper, richer, more masculine fragrances and I'm discovering how much I like them. But this is the Tuscan Leather from Tom Ford. And this is a product that I'm sure you can find at Sephora, but I just wanted to mention this because it is, because it's, yeah, it's just, it's so fall winter and I've been wearing this one a lot. I mentioned in last month's favorites, uh, the Memo Paris Sicilian leather fragrance. I love that. It has that uh, like new leather scent with um, some citrus in there. So it's just, oh, it's just gorgeous. It's a really bright fragrance despite it's like leather scent, but it's like a new leather. This Tuscan leather is like an old leather. <laughs> this is like an old leather chair in a library kind of scent. Oh, I love it. So I had to mention the Tuscan leather from Tom Ford. And then, oh God, it's all wet. <laughs> I just grabbed some of this stuff out of my shower. Um, moving on to Jo Malone, I actually don't have a fragrance to talk about, but this is the English Pear and Freesia Exfoliating Shower Gel. I believe this is new. And as you guys know, I'm really into scrubs, scalp scrubs, hand scrubs, body scrubs, love it all. Um, and I love the English Pear and Freesia fragrance, especially around the holidays. I don't know, it's like a holiday scent to me. So this is a really beautiful, effective body scrub. It has kind of like a gel-like uh, texture, like when I squeeze it out of this uh, tube, it almost is like a little bit stringy. So it has that kind of grip to your skin. So when you're working it in, definitely loosens up obviously in the water, but it's not like, you know, when you have those scrubs in a tub, I feel like by the time it like lands on my skin, like a little bit has like already fallen into the shower floor. You don't get that with this because it's, it's jelly. It kind of like clings. So that's really nice. And it smells just like the English Pear and Freesia. Yeah, it's no different in this product. So I wanted to mention that, really been enjoying this. And then speaking of body scrubs, you guys know I have to talk about Suzanne Kaufman. Suzanne Kaufman is one of my favorite skincare, mostly body care lines, like the bath stuff. Oh my gosh. And this body scrub and body butter. I actually don't know why Suzanne Kaufman isn't carried at more places. Um, her line is, it's just impeccable, absolutely impeccable. So the body scrub, I'm just gonna show you. Oh wow, this is my second tub and I'm almost done. It's very um, light and kind of whipped in texture. And it has like really fine, you can actually hear it probably, like fine granules. It's such a lovely body scrub. I really, really enjoy using it. And then this body butter, if you slather it on after the shower, it smells so incredible. And look at that texture. Oh, it's so rich, but it's not heavy. It's one of those beautiful, like rich, thick, velvety lotions. But as soon as you start working it into the skin, it just like melts right in. My God, I love it. So Suzanne Kaufman, I would probably, I would recommend pretty much anything from her line. She has like a beautiful hand cream. Um, she has like a beautiful bubble bath. Oh my gosh, love her bubble bath. She has these oils. Love it, love this line so much. So Suzanne Kaufman, huge fan. Oh, I actually brought down Suzanne Kaufman's hand cream. So that's what the hand cream looks like. It's beautiful. And speaking of body scrubs, this is the newest body scrub to my collection. I got a lot. Um, this is the Amora Vitsa Gold Sugar Scrub. And this is glorious. So, I hope it's not too wet. So here's what it looks like. 
and it actually leaves like a little bit of a goldness on your skin. It's pretty much gone once you like towel off, but it feels and like looks so luxurious as you're using it. It really is like, oh my, I'm like pampering myself. It's really nice. The fragrance is very, very subtle. It's very spa-like. It smells very natural. And the scrub itself is, is a, it's a good amount of scrub. It's like not too rough. It's not too gentle. Um, and then, I don't know if you guys can see it. Like the cream that it's sitting in is very, it's dense, but it's almost foamy. It's just a really cool texture and I've been very much enjoying this in the shower. It's really wonderful. Like if you're having like a, a pampering yourself day, this is a great product to use. And some other Amora Vitsa products that I've been loving, this Queen Cleanser. This is great if you have just really irritated skin, if you need something really gentle. Here is the texture of that. Do you see how rich that is? It's almost like a cold cream. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit less oily feeling than a cold cream, but it has that feeling to it. And yeah, and if you just have dry, irritated, sensitive skin like I do, this is just wonderful and you don't need that much. I've actually been living off of that little like cover that comes on here. I've just been like taking a little bit off of that every single time I've opened it up. So you don't need a lot of it. Yeah, and it's just a really great like cream cleanser if you're looking for one. And look how beautiful this packaging is. This soft pink is so nice. Like it just looks really great on the vanity. And then I didn't even realize Amorvitsa had this product, but these are peachy, micellar cleansers. So these are basically micellar cleansers in a pad. I always double cleanse, uh, especially when I have makeup on. So I do like to use like a micellar type cleanser um, as my first cleanse, just like a quick little cleanse, just to get like, you know, the, the outer layer <laughs> of makeup off. And then I go in with a, a stronger kind of cleanser. Um, and so this is really great for that. And these pads, I don't know if you can even tell, these pads are fairly large. They're much larger than ones that I've seen for uh, like acne or whatever, like those kinds of pads. They're larger than that. I would say they're at least like another half of those. Just really, really good size. And I just used both sides of it. And the main reason why I wanted to try these was I thought they'd be really great for travel. So I can't wait to travel. Well, I can't wait to travel. <laughs> and then I can't wait to travel with this. It has a very, very faint, not a very synthetic kind of peach, just a very faint kind of peachy, fresh kind of scent. Very faint and it's effective. It's an effective like micellar cleanser. So I've really been enjoying this as well. And then the last thing I wanted to mention from Amorvitsa is the Queen of Hungary Mist. This is the first product I ever tried from Amorvitsa. This and their thermal cleansing balm. Have you guys ever used that? That is great if you have dry skin. It's a great cleansing balm. Anyway, this Hungry Mist, I, I probably have like three of these kind of just all over. And first of all, the sprayer, it's so fine. I love the really, really faint, fresh, like slightly floral scent. It's so faint, it's already gone. The fine mist is so refreshing. But what I love about this is that it doesn't really leave a trace. There's a lot of facial sprays out there where if my skin is feeling really dry and I want something that's gonna moisturize, I have ones for that purpose. But if I just want a little refresher, just a little kind of a pick-me-up, this is amazing. This is a very kind of like middle of the road. I feel like if you have oily skin, dry skin, combo skin, or whatever, you can use this mist. Um, so that is the Queen of Hungary mist from Amorvitsa. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this. And I feel like I'm constantly on the search for like neck <laughs> products now. Is this what happens when you turn 48? I feel like I'm always looking for something that's gonna just like tighten this up a little bit. And I've been trying the Mila Morsi Neck Contouring Fluid. This is, um, I feel like fluid isn't quite the right term for it because this is a fairly uh, rich cream. Actually, let me pump some out here. So here's the cream, you know, it's, it's fairly dense. Then, you know, obviously when you start working it in, it will soak in. But I've been using this cream for, since before October. So I wanna say maybe three weeks and I'm really enjoying it. I have to say, I feel like it's done a good job kind of like bringing my jawline back to life. <laughs> back to life, it was, uh, it was slowly dying there. That jawline was slowly dying. So I feel like contouring is actually a good work for this. I don't know that it's necessarily done much for like these lines here. I don't know if anything will do much for these lines here. Uh, maybe it's softened it a little bit, but what I see with this mainly is I feel like this looks lifted. 
like a little bit more lifted. Yeah, like this whole area is like a little bit tighter. So if that's what you're looking for, like contouring action, I would definitely give this a shot because I feel like I'm really kind of seeing a difference with this uh, neck contouring fluid. Okay, moving on, geez, before I lose steam, let's talk about brushes. So Beautylish, hands down, carries uh, the best brush selection out there. They have Sonia G, they have their own line, the Beautylish Presents line, uh, Wayne Goss, Chikahoto, Koyudo, I mean, some of my favorites. So I'm really gonna try and hone this in. Um, I already mentioned the Surat brush, any of his brushes are incredible. So I definitely recommend those. The Sonia G brushes, I mean, they're all so great and they're in and out of stock. So it's hard for me to say like, get this one, get this one, because I'm afraid it won't be in stock. But I did see her post, Sonia G post on Instagram that a lot of her brushes are coming back into stock and she's hoping that they'll be back in stock in time for this gift card event. So I did want to mention the face one brush. She said that she's, uh, coming back out with this, this is gonna be part, I think, of the next delivery, um, but I think she's renamed it. So I don't know that this is gonna be the Face One brush anymore, but it's going to be the same style of brush. Hey guys, editing me. So I'm sitting here editing this video and Sonia G just posted a new post to her Instagram feed and it says, it looks like the items I mentioned on my blog post will be restocked at the start of the Beautylish gift card event, which is uh, today. Uh, starting at nine o'clock Pacific. So these items are the Sky Eye Set, the Sky Face Set, the Pro Face Set, the Double Decker Case, the Soft Brush Book, the Portable Organizer, the Buffer Pro Brush. So that is the new name for the Face One Brush, and it's going to have a new handle, um, and the Smooth Buffer Brush. The Smooth Buffer Brush, which is the one with the blue handle, the little bit smaller one, that one is 18 millimeters in diameter at the top of the ferrule, which is that metal part. And then at the surface of the bristles, it's 30 millimeters in diameter. And then the Buffer Pro, AKA the Face One brush, it's 20 millimeters in diameter at the top of the ferrule. And then at the surface of the bristles, it's 40 millimeters in diameter. So that's the size difference for the two. I love them both. I just, I cannot recommend those brushes enough. And when I saw this post, I just had to hop on here and let you guys know. So anyway, back to the video. And the last brush I'll just call out because I recommend all of the Sonya G brushes, all of them are amazing, um, is the Sculpt 2 brush. And I just wanted to call this one out because I feel like more and more people are asking me about how to best apply baked gelée products. And they can be a little bit tricky because they're baked, they're like a gel to powder type of formula. And so when you get them, they're very hard and you need a dense, preferably natural haired brush uh, to pick up the product. And if you really like Beige Gelée highlighters, as much as I do, I would definitely get the Sculpt 2 brush. This is the best brush to pick up any highlight actually, but especially Beige Gelée highlights. Um, so Sculpt 2 brush. And then Koyudo has some of my favorite brushes. These are part of the Yoshihi line. And this is the number one brush, and then this is the large eyeshadow brush. And I actually just used this today with the By Terry shadows, just to add like a smoky line here. It's great for that. It's also just great for like blending out shadows if you really want to like work two shadows together or whatever, and just running it over like the area where they meet. Um, so that's the large eyeshadow brush. And this, this is like a bigger version of the Surat brush. See, it's just so round and fluffy, this actually is more of an accurate kind of like bunny tail. This is so great for blushes. I love using this and like really working in circular motions, really working blush in. So loving these two brushes from Koyudo. I'm sorry to jump around, but I was just kind of digging through my brush collection, looking for one brush that I wanted to recommend for you guys, which I think I'm gonna have to get up and get. Um, but I found this uh, mini base brush from Sony G's Kayaki set. So this is part of her travel set. And this is still available, I believe, but this is the same as the mini base brush. It's the same brush, just has a different handle. So this is a travel set, so the handle is much shorter. So if you're looking for a travel set and you're really tempted by these fusion brushes and you really like this mini base brush, you may want to consider the Kayaki set. Okay, um, so this is the Chikahoto brush that I wanted to uh, find for you guys. This is Z5. This is a large eyeshadow brush. If you are a one and done shadow lover like myself, this is the perfect brush for that because it's so 
big. You can just do like a few sweeps and you're done. This is squirrel hair, so it's incredibly, incredibly soft. If you do have sensitive lids, you're gonna love this brush. So that's the Z5. And then when I was uh, digging this out, I found the um, Chikahoto Cheek Highlight Brush. I love this brush because it has like a little bit of like a fluffiness at the top, but it's still a firm brush so you can pick up product, but you can lay it down in a really soft, diffused way. I just love it, super soft. So those are two Chikahoto brushes I wanted to call out. There's so many, I mean, Chikahoto is another line, just any brush, you can't go wrong. I'm sitting here, I'm holding the GSN-1 powder brush that I really love. The Z1 powder brush is amazing, so soft, so beautiful. Um, but let's just keep this moving um, because I did want to talk about the um, Beautylish Yano series brushes. I really love these brushes. So this is brush number one. This is a giant powder brush, like really oversized powder brush. This is so luxurious to use. It's so soft on the skin. It feels incredible. Let me just hold it up to the GSN-1, which is pretty large. This is even bigger. So this is a beautiful brush. Number two is probably the brush that I use the most because it is smaller than brush number one but I love that it has this really interesting angle here. Do you see that? So it's asymmetric in shape, but I feel like this is great for this motion if you're just trying to sweep powder on. And then the other side is like a more, I don't know, traditional uh, kind of shaped powder brush that you can use to kind of buff things in. But I really like this angled side to just really kind of like sweep some powder away. So. Uh, love the number two. And then here is brush number three, which is another one of my favorites. Again, from the Yano series. Let me just hold it up next to this Chikahoto cheek highlight brush. So this one comes to a more tapered top here where this kind of fans out a little bit more. So this is gonna have a softer application, um, but this I find a little bit more, I guess, versatile. Like you're always gonna get a pretty diffused application with this. With this, I feel like you could dust away setting powder underneath your eyes. You can apply a highlight this way if you want. Um, obviously, you can apply blush. It's just a really great shape, and it kind of reminds me, it's like a like an amped up version of Wayne Goss's airbrush because it's thicker and just a little bit bigger all around. I'm looking around. You should see my vanity right now. It is a disaster. It is crazy looking, but I'm looking around to see if I've forgotten anything. I, I should have mentioned uh, some of the Wayne Goss brushes. I love the Artist Collection, the Airbrush I actually just mentioned, but those uh, brushes are beautiful. But anyway, I think I've thrown enough stuff out at you guys. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.